Hello everyone. So in this video I want to show you something really interesting. So I have two programs here. They are exactly the same and um, don't worry too much about the time parts or the print but um, right here I have the exact same loop in both of them which is just uh, taking a thousand by thousand array right here and then uh, just initializing all of the values to zero. The only difference between these two programs is that um, here I am doing ARR of i comma j whereas here I am doing ARR of j comma i. So uh, that's the only difference. I am uh, accessing in one case according to the row whereas in the other case I am uh, accessing it along the columns so when I run these programs I'm expecting these loops to take approximately the same time because um, I mean how much should it matter for uh, if I access an a two-dimensional array row wise or column wise so uh, let me actually run these programs so I'll have to compile them first all right so I've compiled these programs and now let's see how much time uh, my first one takes which is along the row and as you can see the total time it shows is 3577 this is in microseconds and now let's see how much time our column major takes I'm expecting around the same time maybe uh, 3000 to 4000 anywhere should be fine so let's see this and as you can see it gave me a huge 20,000. Uh, 20,000 actually sounds a bit too big but now as you can see it's giving me 7,000 and if I try it again it's giving me again 8,000, 10,000, 10,000 again. So uh, let's take a look at our row major again and as you can see it's taking now 6,000, 6,000 again, 3,500, 3,800 so as you can see there's a huge difference um, between accessing it by the row versus accessing it by the column uh, which is pretty baffling and um, before we go into the explanation of this I want to show you something else as well. So what I have here is what I did I um, ran the programs 25 times both of them alternate and then just recorded the times. So as you can see the blue ones are when I access it by the row, the red ones are when I access it by the column uh, and there's actually a huge difference when I uh, ran these statistics I'm getting more than twice the time when I uh, do a column wise access of my array. So uh, that's again quite a big difference the exact value I was getting was I think 2.1 times. So uh, let's look into the explanation of why this is happening. Alright so to understand this let's take a smaller example um, because we can't take a thousand by thousand array. So let's take the array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. So this is my array right here. and. Um, what happens is this array is stored in memory and uh, when we say memory it's uh, the random access memory that we talk about that's where our variables are stored. So in memory which is linear all data must be stored linearly. So there are two ways that this array can be stored. So let's look at what those two ways are. The first way to store this is to go row wise so it stores 1 then then a 2 then a 3 then a 4 and so on that's one way to store this the other way to store this is to go column wise so the other option that we have is to store 1 followed by a 4 
followed by the 7, followed by the 2, followed by the 5 and so on. So this is the other way that can be used to store it because remember memory is linear so even a two dimensional array or be it an n dimensional array it has to be stored linearly. So this is our memory right here so these are the two options. So uh, this one the first one is row major. So this is row major and this is column major. So the storage format is known as row major or column major. If we store it row wise then it's called row major. If we store it column wise it's called column major. And uh, this thing is our memory. Now what happens is when I try to access some value, so let's say I try to access the one right here, what it does is uh, not just pick it up from memory and give me the value, but there's another step in between, which is the cache. And now what happens is, what it does is it puts the one in the cache so it's going to put the one right here. It's going to pick it up from the memory from here and uh, put it in my cache right here. So uh, the reason it puts it into the cache is because uh, the next time I want to access this again, I can just get it from the cache instead of trying to access it from the memory. So accessing something from the cache is faster than accessing it from memory but the cache is usually much smaller. So you can't really store the entire thing in cache itself. You just store some parts of it. So what we do is we put the one from the memory to the cache. Now, what really happens is not just one integer being picked from the memory and put into the cache, but instead an entire block. So what it's going to do is from memory, it's going to take either this block or this block based on how my uh, memory is arranged. It's going to take either one of these two blocks and then put it into the cache so I could get something like 1, 2 and 3 if the storage format in memory is row major and if it's column major then I could get a 1, 4 and 7. And uh, I'm just taking three integers as an example. It's uh, probably not three integers, but what it does is it takes, it picks up a block of integers from memory and puts it into the cache. So after this, what happens is when I, after I've tried to access this one, when I try to access the two right here, it can be picked from the cache itself. There's no need to go to memory and find the two for me. So it just picks up the two from the cache. Then when I try to access the three, it just picks it up from cache again. Now, if, uh, if this, has, this had been, let's say, uh, four and seven, four and seven, then uh, when I try to access the four, it can be picked from cache. When I try to access the seven, it can be picked from cache. So when I'm trying to access an array row wise, uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to access one, then I'm going to access two, then I'm going to access three and so on. Uh, so in that case, it actually makes, it would make sense to me to have a row major storage format in memory. Whereas when I access an array column wise, it would make sense um, to have a column major storage because after my one, I'm going to access the four after which I'll access the seven when I'm going column wise. So if this block right here, 147 is picked up from memory and put into cache, that actually helps me. But it's actually not the storage format which we can modify. Uh, think about it this way, the storage format has already been decided by the architecture, by the operating system. So all of that is already done. What I can do is I can decide how I want to access my array. So because I know that the storage format used is row major, which is what most modern architectures use. In that case, I would 
uh, try and make sure that in my program, whenever I try to access a two-dimensional array, I'm always going row-wise because that's going to be faster. So that's the explanation of why going row-wise actually works faster than going column-wise. Column I hope it made sense. The reason that this might become important is because when we're using C, a lot of times execution time is very fast, which is one of the primary reasons that we choose C in a project. So uh, if you look at the execution time of C versus something like Python, that's, that's going to be something like a difference of eight times or something. So the execution time of C is, go is going to be something like eight times faster than Python. Um, I'm not sure about the exact figures, but that's the scale that we are talking about. And uh, when it comes to fast execution times, these uh, microsecond differences are going to uh, be helpful, which is why we should know um, how to make sure that our code is really optimized to uh, the last bit that we can do. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to give the video the thumbs up, share the video with your friends so that they can also learn something new. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time with something, uh, something interesting again. Until then, bye-bye.